Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I am joined by incoming freshman on the Stanford women's lacrosse team, Ava Brosnan. Ava was named as an Under Armour All-American this past season, and I'm excited to have her on today. So Ava, thank you so much for coming on the pod, and how's everything going? Uh, everything's going really good. Just had the I had actually lacrosse earlier today, so I just showered, ready to go. Well, I'm excited to have you on, and obviously you recently just graduated high school, so how excited are you to be done with that, and do you have any fun off-season plans before heading off to college this fall? Um, A lot of my off-season has been lifting, so I've been lifting all summer, and thankfully, like, my class is really good about getting together, so we've had three things together we've done inside of the cross, committed games, um, Triple H committee games and Lake Placid. We have Lake Placid coming up this weekend. So that's really fun. It's really good to like bond with everyone in our class and the glade below us. So that's been really good. And those are mostly my off season plans. And then I played over in Prague for a little bit. So like it's kind of taken up my summer, but in a good way. That's good to hear. And obviously we'll talk about your experience in Prague in a little bit, but I know you've obviously been training for the upcoming season. So what do you hope to work on in preparation for your first year in college lacrosse? Um, definitely being in shape and being able, like going to college across like the first year is pretty hard. Like, even if you think you're in shape, you're not in shape. So staying like really fit and trying to keep up with everyone and like the lacrosse gets way faster. So being able to like develop my IQ more so I can keep up with everyone is going to be like a big challenge for me, but also something I'm looking forward to. So let's start off and talk about the beginning of your career and sort of work all the way down to where you are today. So uh, you're from Winchester, Massachusetts. Talk about growing up there and how did you start playing lacrosse and falling in love with the sport? Um, lacrosse wasn't really that big in Winchester. I grew up playing field hockey and ice hockey. And my friends had been doing like the older varsity girls would do like clinics for the younger kids. So like one of my friends like had said to my mom, like, oh, she should do this. So in about like third grade, we started doing clinics. And then I did our youth program and I just like loved it so much. It was, I loved it way more than all the other sports I play. And then like in like fifth grade, sixth grade, I started kind of taking it more seriously and then just kind of took off from there. And did you watch any lacrosse growing up? And if so, who are some of your favorite players and teams that you like to uh, watch and admire? Um, I did grow up watching a lot of lacrosse. I loved watching BC. I'm so close to BC. My dad went there and I loved watching Dempsey Arsenal. Like she's just like amazing. And I hope to be like her when I'm in college. Have you had the chance to meet her? Cause I know she does some stuff with, uh, inside um, yeah, the I actually did. I met her. She, I used to do private lessons with her and that was like, so like surreal meeting her in person. That's pretty awesome. What was some of the things that uh, she taught you in those lessons? Um, a lot of dodging stuff. She's obviously like a phenomenal dodger. So like learning her like favorite dodges that like I would see in like highlight clips at BC was like kind of crazy. That's pretty awesome. Not many people get the chance to uh, get private lessons from their favorite uh, lacrosse players. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm assuming she's super nice. Um, out, yeah, like so well. nice, so down to earth. So that was amazing. Now you played the past few years uh, with your prep school team with Dexter Southfield. Uh, so I want to ask you, talk about your uh, prep school lacrosse experience and what did you take away from it when you look back on it today? Um, I was so grateful to play for Dexter. My high school coach was also my club coach. So like that made it really easy in the recruiting process, but she was just like amazing. I've known her like my whole life and playing prep school is definitely like way different in public school. There's like so many good girls in like the ISL and like the independent league. So playing against them was really awesome to build those connections. Cause I'm going to play against them in college too, which seemed like really fun to see. So it was really good. Cause like everyone made each other better, but everyone was also friends like off the field, which was like really cool. And also you have to learn how to balance both academics and lacrosse at a high level yeah. since you go to a very good prep school. And obviously Stanford is the same way for college. So how have you learned to balance both those aspects of your life? And how do you think it's going to translate once you get to college with even more workload than you did in high school? Um, honestly, Dexter was like so amazing at helping me balance academically, like what I needed to get done. And they were like very big on your student first, which was very helpful. So all my teachers were so willing to help me whenever I needed help, like stay after school with me before school, like would help me revolve around my lacrosse schedule. And like when I would need to go away for things, like they weren't like mad about it. They were very helpful with helping me keep up with the class. So like that was like a really great experience that I'm definitely going to like use those tools that I use and carry them over to college. Now, what have been some of your favorite lacrosse memories with Dexter Southfield when you look back on it now? Um, 
every year before we start, we go to Florida for a week. And like, I used to dread it and being like, oh, I used to go to Florida. Like, obviously, like, obviously I love going to Florida, but I was like, oh, I'd rather just stay home. Like when my friends are home, but like, that was like the best experience ever. We'd get mixed with like people from all different grades. It'd be like three girls in a room and it would be like from three different grades or whatever. And it was like so awesome because it helped build our culture so much and like everyone bonded and like we would go in, like we'd play so much better being bonded all together. So I was really thankful for that. And I'm definitely going to miss it. You also had the opportunity to represent uh, team Massachusetts slash Rhode Island at the USA lacrosse women's national tournament, where you won that tournament championship. Uh, so I want to ask you, what was it like winning that championship? And what do you think it meant to you in your early stages of your lacrosse career? Um, it was really awesome to make that team. The tryout was so many girls and I was like, honestly shocked when I made the first team. But um, two of my teammates were on it as well, Emma Verhoes and Pauline Vian. So it was good to have a little group from my school, but also to meet all the other girls because some were public school girls and most of them were private school girls that I knew. And we'd all play together before. So it was really awesome to like get to play together again. And it was honestly like so amazing winning it. I know they won it like three years in a row before. So we were like, oh, we have to win it again this year. But it was like really awesome to like, watch everyone come from different schools and like play together and like play so well together. Who were some of the teams that you faced? Was it like other States? Like, did you beat like New York yeah. and Maryland yeah, and all those played, teams? Like, like Long Island, like Metro DC and stuff like that. And like different States together. We only played a few games. We didn't play again. We didn't get to play everyone, but um, we did play a lot of like other States and it was cool to like band together and beat them. That's pretty awesome. Cause I think most people would think that, uh, Maryland and Long Island are sort of lacrosse hotbeds, but it's good to see that you guys are showing that Massachusetts yeah. is one of those as well. Now, you also played for the Irish national team in the European Games. Uh, I just want to ask, how did that opportunity come about? And what was that experience like for you going to Prague and representing Ireland? Um, one of my club coaches actually was the head coach, was on um, the assistant coach, and then the Brown coach was the head coach. Um, my club coach has said to me before, and I'm a dual citizen there already. My dad was born there. So um, when I heard, honestly, what caught my attention was going to Prague. I'm like, oh, I've never been there. Like, that sounds really fun. So um, me and a couple of my friends who play in college as well, um, we all went over to Dublin and we tried out for the team. And it's like half the team is like, it's like mostly American girls, but there's some Irish girls and they're like working on building the sport over there. So it was like really cool to like, see like younger girls like interested in the sport and like help like show them kind of American lacrosse and like helping them build their confidence like playing and stuff like that and we were out there for about a week and a half and like uh the tough thing was definitely the language barrier because they don't they speak Czechia they don't speak English there and we played a lot of teams like Germany Israel and they like Scotland they all speak like a different language so it was like really cool to see and it was like kind of cool to play international lacrosse it's like a little bit of different roles and you don't wear goggles. So like, that was a good experience, but like overall, like I'm really happy I did it. And like, I don't, I, yeah, I'm just like really happy I did it. It was like definitely life-changing. Now, before this season, you had to deal with some challenges due to the pandemic with things being delayed and obviously not having the chance to play some games during uh, your sophomore and junior year. So how have you handled that challenge and how do you think it's made you a better player throughout your lacrosse development? Because obviously that's a key part, just trying to play games and get better. And it's really hard to do that when that isn't happening. So I'm just curious how you sort of handled that adversity and sort of got yourself prepared for the next level uh, during that time. Um, When COVID first shut down, um, it was honestly like, I didn't really realize how like bad it was going to be. Um, but like, I have a younger brother, so I honestly spent like most of my days just like playing around on my brother in the backyard. I'd throw him in like hockey equipment and like shoot on him with tennis balls. And like, we would just play around in the backyard all day. And luckily for us, like when we went back to school, we were able to play a little bit. Um, we only had a few games, we tore masks and stuff like that, which was difficult, but like, it really made me appreciate each game we had. Cause we didn't know, like, cause some games we'd be like ready to go and they'd be like, Oh, it's canceled. Like a girl on their team, like contact trace, we can't play. So like, that was really devastating, but um, it definitely made me appreciate like all the opportunities I have to play now without a mask and everything. So like definitely just made me appreciate like everything a little bit more. Now, what do you think has been the biggest improvement you've made to your lacrosse uh, game this past season and heading into college? um definitely be more confident sometimes like if during a game like one or two things don't go well for me I kind of like shut down but like 
just learning to like move past it, like just move on to the next play has been like really important. And hopefully like that will follow me to college. Cause like, while maybe you won't make as many mistakes in high school, like once you get to college, like you're kind of more exposed cause everyone's so much better. So like learning just to like roll with the punches and just like move on when something bad happens is something that like I've improved and I hope to improve more. Now, how has your previous lacrosse experiences helped prepare you for a college lacrosse with Stanford? Um, I feel like when I was younger, I really had to grind for everything. So that's really helped me prepare for Stanford because I know it's like out there is kind of a different like West Coast across a little bit of a different animal. So being able to play with these girls that are all like so, so good and grinding for everything in school and in lacrosse is going to like really help me become a better like player in person. Now talk about your recruiting process with Stanford and what made you want to go there versus the schools you might have looked at. Um, it honestly, it was never on my radar. I never thought I could get in. I just like was like, wow, it's Stanford. like I'm not even going to touch that. Like there's really no point in me trying. But um, my recruiting process in November came and I got some D1 schools that I wasn't really in love with. And I'm like, I'm not going to just jump at what I have. So I waited. And in November, she saw me at a lacrosse tournament. And then um, she had so Stanford does a type of pre-read process. And when she had pre-read me, she was like, I'm not 100, like she wasn't 100% sure that like at the end of the year when I apply, I'd get in. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to wait through the year and keep looking for different schools. And she's like, have that on the back burner. And then when it came down to it in the June, I had applied and gotten in, but a lot of schools that like, I was between like Hopkins, Georgetown and Stanford. And like, I loved all the coaches. They're all like such like cutting edge like new type of lacrosse coaches but like when it came down to it like Danielle was like the real like pusher for me and like I just wanted to play for her so bad so I ended up choosing Stanford and for all the Stanford lacrosse fans that have never seen you play before just describe your game to them and sort of what could uh Cardinal fans expect when they watch you play on the field next season um I like playing fast I like running like I love running I like playing midfield and attack I'm a lefty attacker so my game is usually I love I love playing a two-man game, three-man game, and, like, doing things with other people and working together, but I also love dodging, and I just love playing fast. Now, from your perspective, what makes the Pac-12 different from other conferences in college lacrosse? Because I know you said it was out west. You sort of didn't really know too much about the program before they started recruiting you. Obviously, you knew how good the school was, but from a lacrosse perspective, it was sort of like something that you had to learn more about during your recruiting process. Yeah, the Pac-12 is just, like, a great conference. It's full of, like, amazing academic schools. Like, Stanford, like, is just, like, in every single sport. They're great. Like, they just dominate the Pac-12, and I wanted to be a part of that. Now, what do you think is going to be the biggest adjustment you have to make in college across? Um, Getting used to not playing right away. I feel like in high school, like, if you were good, you got to play. Whereas in college, like everyone's good. So you really have to like grind it out just to get like a little bit of playing time. So that's going to be a big adjustment for me, but like I'm ready for the challenge. Now, have you been watching any Stanford lacrosse uh, this past year? And have you had the chance to meet any of your future teammates as well, whether they're commits like yourself heading into the team next year or current players on the team as well? Yeah, I've gone to meet my entire class. We all know each other really well. I've gone to meet the class below us, the 24s. They're all so adorable. And I've gone to meet a lot of my future teammates. One of them lives in New Hampshire. So I've been, I play lacrosse there sometimes, like when we have private lessons together. But a lot of them um, are from like Long Island, New York. And they're all just like so amazing. Like also like just how amazing all the people are, are when I was out there, like really was a pusher for me. They're all just like so supportive and love each other. And I just wanted to be a part of that. Now, what are your individual and team goals with Stanford uh, for next season? Um, Our team goals definitely to win the Pac-12 again and to make it to the NCAAs and make it far in the NCAAs. Um, my individual goals is just to um, be a team player and just be supportive of everyone else and like work really hard and able to get on the field. Now, uh, what's the thing that most excites you about college lacrosse when you think about it for next season? Is it just playing in the Pac-12, uh, getting to play in some big games with Stanford or anything else that I might not be aware of? Um, Definitely getting to play in some big games, like being able to play in big games against like Northwestern, Denver, UVA is just like, so like I've grew up watching them. So like being able to like play against them would just be like surreal. 
Uh, so we're now in a segment I like to call uh, six questions that have nothing to do with the cross. And the goal of the segment is to hopefully get to know you a little bit more off the field. Uh, so my first one is what music do you like to listen to? Um, I like listening to country music. I love Morgan Wallen. He's like my favorite artist. I love Taylor Swift. Um, I also love the neighborhood, like sweater weather and stuff like that. I just like love those type of like vibey indie music. Mm hmm. I'm the sort of same way as you. I have listened to every genre of music, so whatever mode yeah. I'm into, I just go to that one. Um, I would say I'm a big Morgan Wallen fan myself. Uh, definitely like his new album, and I like Taylor Swift as well, uh, but I feel like it's a little bit embarrassing for me to admit that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, no, she's the best. <laughs> now, what is your most embarrassing lacrosse moment? Um, my most embarrassing lacrosse moment was we had a game against Phillips Exeter, and it was like 90 degrees out, and I was like so dehydrated. And I just started chugging water and then I just like looked down. I just like completely peed my pants. Oh, but I, man. Had to play. I had to play. I had to like play in that. I just had to like walk out on the field and just eat it. Did anyone like notice on the other team? No. That's good. At least, at least, you, at least it was only embarrassing to yourself, not yeah, to other people. Like, so, oh God. <laughs> now, let's ask you some questions about your teammates with Dexter. So, who was the funniest on the team? Um, there was a freshman on our team named Maggie Keys, and she was honestly like the funniest freshman I've ever met in my life. Like, she didn't act like a freshman; she acted like she was a senior, and she just like did not care. And it was like the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, you had the best style on the team, obviously, but besides yourself, who would you say had the best off the field style on the Dexter team? Um, who had the best style? Probably her sister Izzy. She's an older <laughs> sister, she's a junior, and she probably is the best style. Now, what's the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week? Um, the most interesting thing I've read. Hmm. I was reading an article about how Celsius is not good for you anymore. And I drink Celsius every day. So that was kind of annoying to read. That's tough. I don't need people to validate that it's bad for me. I just I keep drinking it. I don't I don't think I've ever heard of this. Is it like a seltzer water? Uh, no, Celsius. It's like uh, like energy drink. It's like bad for your heart, apparently. Which oh, is not great. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Honestly, I only drink water and milk. That's the. I don't drink anything else. I find everything else uh, pretty but disgusting. So luckily, I don't have to worry about that too much. We used to drink them like every day before games, and it's like if you drink too much, like the NCAA like is like banning them too. Like you're not really supposed to drink them anymore, which sucks because they're my favorite. But is what it is. You can still do it during the off season, I assume. So yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, the most interesting thing that I saw this week was Patrice Bergeron retiring. That was obviously very sad. Oh, just a big yeah, part of my was... childhood. Um, so definitely gonna miss him with the Bruins next year. But uh, yeah, it just feels it makes me feel old because Brady's gone, uh, Bergeron's gone, and Ortiz retired a few years ago. So like all these players I liked watching growing up are now not playing anymore. So that that's tough for me. Yeah. I grew up watching him too, watching a lot of Bruins games. So that's really sad for me. So, yeah. But, you know, I still think they will still be a good team next year, even though some people might disagree with me on that. But that's for another podcast. Uh, now, next, last non lacrosse question is what if you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Um, it'd probably be Taylor Swift because I'd want to ask her what each of her songs, like who they're about. Like, I want to know like the facts about what each breakup song, like who they're about. And like what happened isn't it sort of like known though even though it's not known like i heard all too well is about jake gyllenhaal but like it's not confirmed obviously but pretty yeah, much like, everyone knows it's not confirmed but i want the confirmed i want like the details of yeah. like what happened yeah i wonder how you i wonder how people find that stuff out um i'd say for me probably tom brady i think that'd be cool to have lunch with him yeah. and get his perspective on being the best football player of all time so now, getting back to some lacrosse questions now, for all the younger players listening to this episode, what advice do you get, get want to give to them about what it takes to be a college lacrosse player like yourself? Um, I think just knowing it's all going to work out. I know I was definitely very stressed in September when I didn't get, like, some schools I dreamed of, but I'm like, if you just keep playing and keep grinding it out, like, it all works out. Like, I ended up getting the schools I wanted in the end, so it all works out with time, so there's nothing really to freak out about on September 1st. And what should be done to help grow women's lacrosse from your perspective? Um, definitely offering more like opportunities for college players and high school players to grow, like to help grow it. Like I know I did some stuff with Harlem lacrosse. I've done like, we've done clinics at my school with like Harlem lacrosse, like with my high school team. We've done a lot with Brooklyn youth lacrosse, like just like inspiring them and being nice to them, like makes them want to be there. 
So I think doing more of that, like getting more high schools involved, like these big nonprofit programs is like really helpful in growing girls across. Yeah, I saw, so I saw, I was reading your bio on the Stanford website. They said you've been doing Harlem Lacrosse for a few years now. What is that yeah. program? Um, it's a program out of Harlem for like kind of lower income families and kids. They come to different schools and camps and it gives them the opportunity to like learn about lacrosse. So we did it at Dexter and it was like really like awesome to like meet all these kids and like show them our school and like show them like what lacrosse can bring you, like where you can go with lacrosse and like all the opportunities it provides you. So it was really awesome to spread that to them and like inspire them. That's awesome. Are you going to try to continue to do stuff like that in college still? Um, yeah, I, I probably will. When I come home, I'll probably try to continue that. That's awesome. And then last uh, question I have for you is, do you have any shout outs you want to give uh, to any of your teammates, future teammates, family members, friends, and who should we have on the podcast next? Um, definitely my high school coaches, my club coaches, um, my family. I wouldn't be able to be here without my family and all their support. Um, my high school teammates and like looking forward to being with all my future teammates in like the coming weeks. So that's gonna be awesome. Um, someone you should have the podcast next is my friend Kiki Tormi. She plays at Brown. She was also on the European team with me and she's just a great player. She's going into her sophomore year. She's an attacker at Brown. Well, I'll definitely reach out and uh, see what happens. But Ava, I appreciate you coming on the podcast and I really appreciate your time. It means so much to myself. I really enjoyed our uh, chat today and uh, can't wait to see you play uh, with Stanford uh, in the upcoming years. I know it's going to be exciting. I think you're a great player, even better person. And I just want to let you know that, but I really enjoyed our conversation today. It was fun getting the chance to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on.